Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process. One has to pursue question earnestly like a faithful shadow meticulously. One should bear question in mind like a small innocent inquisitive child. It is very important to not only ask the question but also pursue it vehemently. Unfortunately with modern education. Uh, we are not really asking question and not even pursuing it even though we are asking sometimes certain question to ourselves. And also uh, this is happening uh, because of very busy lifestyle or a fast lifestyle. So uh, let us now recall what we learnt in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we basically uh, looked at various methods of uh, measuring the warning velocity and in all these methods, uh, we really looked at the propagating flames and how it is moving and what speed it is moving from that data, uh, of course with the help of photographs and also the pressure sensors, we could measure the uh, burning velocity out of it and three methods we uh, had discussed in the last lecture. One is tube method, other is the combustion bomb method, other is soap uh, bubble method. Uh, each one was having their own advantages and disadvantages. Today we will be discussing basically about another method of measuring burning velocity in which the flame will be stabilized unlike in the previous case in which it was moving or propagating. So, let us uh, look at a Bunsen burner flame in a Bunsen burner. You might recall that the Bunsen burner uh, was devised by uh, Bunsen in around 1855. Uh, it is he who was really uh, discovered the premix flame. And typical flame you can look at in a Bunsen burner, like uh, this is your a tube and which is having a wall thickness, and in this case, fuel and oxidizer are premixed uh, thoroughly and uh, at certain equivalence ratio, if you look at phi is your equivalence ratio. And then you can ignite and the flame can be stabilized with the ream. See this is your tube uh, having certain finite thickness. This is your ream of this uh, tube and which you can call it the uh, rim of the burner and uh, which helps in stabilizing the flame because the uh, on the wall of this tube there will be heat losses from the flame in this portion which will be coming over here and uh, a flame will be established a conical flame. Uh, this is a photograph of photograph of a conical flame this flame is basically corresponding to the uh, equivalence ratio less than equal to 1 therefore you get a very sharp feature and a uh, only one flame and uh, uh, this is a very curved one and this is this portion is curved due to the heat losses losses to the rim of the tube or the burner 
and uh, this portion is a curved very much and this the flame is subjected to stretch, stretch flame and uh, this region where it is almost straight. So, it is not subjected to any stretch or the minimum amount of stretch. So, let us now look at uh, that flame in a, uh, another figure which I have shown here and uh, this is basically uh, being obtained by conducting experiments and measuring uh, the shape of a flame. This is your in a natural gas air flame and uh, in this case uh, the particles are being introduced at this end and says so that this particle will be moving along these directions. And if you look at these are basically a steady flame and you can say that these lines are the streamlines and it is diverges in this zone and this is your inner cone zone. And uh, in some cases particularly where equivalence ratio will be greater than 1 rather reach flame there will be some outer diffusion flame will be coming outer uh, cone diffusion flame will be coming particularly when equivalence ratio greater than 1 rather rich mixture flame for rich mixture this can come also. And uh, keep in mind that to have this flame it is very important to uh, have a velocity profile which can give you the conical shape kind of uh, burner which can be stabilized well and uh, keep in mind that velocity profile in this tube uh, one can get different depending on the length of the flame. So, if sufficient length of the uh, tube can be provided for the fuel air mixtures to travel then we can get a fully developed velocity profile and that will be parabolic in nature right. If you look at this is your parabolic in nature and uh, one has to ensure that this uh, velocity profile or the fully developed velocity profile must be ensured such that you can uh, really get the same boundary condition for different set of readings. So, that is very important what you can have uh, for conducting experiment. So, uh, this is a uh, very important aspect one has to do for conducting experiments and so that it can be repeated easily and different equivalence ratio one can maintain uh, so that you can get a various thing. Let us now look at for a one case how this uh, burning velocity that is S L is laminar burning velocity and keep in mind that this if you look at this axis if I can say this is your z axis and this axis is your x. So, if I take the uh, velocity uh, the laminar burning velocity at each location then uh, I can really find it out what will be the uh, I can plot with respect to x that is S L S L versus the x and keep in mind that uh, in this case the flame will be traveling from this direction towards uh, the incoming fuel layer mixtures in such a way that wherever the local velocity right will be perpendicular this is your fluid velocity V and this is your SL at a flame location when V is the fluid velocity this is the velocity of fluid. Uh, rather I would say is the local fluid velocity S L is the local burning velocity. 
the flame will be stabilized as we had seen earlier also V is equal to S L at any location. So, each place it will be having such that it will be uh, you can have different. And this can be uh, very easily obtained uh, earlier days people are using particle tracking method and uh, nowadays one can have a PIV method such that what you will do you will have to find out this velocity v and then you can say this velocity is same as that. So, locally and then you will find out v is equal to S L and when you do that you will find very interestingly S L is being plotted with respect to x this is your x direction right and you can see that the burning velocity is very higher in this zone that means at this zone this zone right burning velocity is higher and in this zone as I had discussed earlier the burning velocity is remaining almost constant. After that of course, it decreases due to the locally heat loss which will be there due to the room uh, to the uh, rim of the tube. So, therefore, this is due to the burning velocity decreases due to heat losses and uh, this is increase S L due to flame stretch. So, what we will be taking basically the actual burning velocity is this, this is the one which we will be taking considering in this burner. So, therefore, it is very important to take consider the proper burning velocities and otherwise it will be wrong. Of course, we will be seeing some other method which is a little crude, but it can give you some average uh, value for the burning velocities. And this whatever I have discussed is basically for the local burning velocity. Uh, so, now look at uh, a method which is very simple to do because just now we have seen that very sophisticated uh, methods is required to measure the local burning velocity on the surface of a flame by using PIV or particle image velocity metry and other very sophisticated instrument. However, in the laboratory we can use a very simple method and uh, for a stationary Bunsen flame by using uh, one method what we call area method. And what we will do in this case, we will take a tube and then consider uh, basically the velocity profile proper so that a flame shape will come. And um, you can take a photograph of this flame and then measure this area of the flame surface and from that one can calculate the burning velocity or average burning velocity of a flame. And uh, if you look at like uh, as I told that a conical flame is to be established at the exit of a tube in which the fully developed flow is being ensured and uh, proper equivalence ratio of fuel and oxidizer has to be maintained. So, that the a flame can be conical flame can be established. Keep in mind that uh, the local burning velocity must be equal to the local flow velocity that is very important. For example, if I take here uh, some velocity, let us say this is having this is your fluid velocity V right and uh, then what will happen I can dissolve this velocity into uh, if I take this is your angle alpha into certain angle along with this direction and then I can dissolve this into this direction. So, that this will be V n this is a normal direction and this is your V t tangential direction along with the flame surface. So, that uh, what will happen you can uh, the flame can be stabilized only when V n is equal to S L locally in this region. But however, in this case we will be using area average method. So, there might be a some velocity profile which will be there here in this case this is. But however, in this calculation what we will be doing we will be taking the average velocity of this profile this may be uh, like this average velocity which will be remaining this is hypothetical 
this is your v average that we are considering as a some hypothetical velocities. As I told the flame shape will be influenced by the exit velocity profile and heat losses to the tube. Length of the tube uh, must be ensured such that fully developed flow should be uh, there at the exit of the this tube. And for stationary flame we can have a mass balance uh, that means, whatever the flow is passing through here in this flame surface which will be taking. So, if you look at this mass balance we can say this is basically unburnt fuel air mixture and which you assume that in this surface also that this will be unburnt. So, we can say that this mixture this is the average velocity average velocity of fuel and oxidizer mixture. So, uh, if I take that out what I will get I will get this rho u v average that is the mass flow rate which is passing through the tube into a t, a t is the area of a t is basically area of tube this is that direction this is your basically cross section of a t is equal to rho u because this is the cold side and this is the hot side this is your hot side and this is your cold side this is your cold mixtures right then that will be unburnt temperature density of the unburnt mixtures into sl SL is the average burning velocity of this flame and is equal to into the A f. A f is basically the flame surface area. So, this will cancel it out. So, you will get basically SL is equal to V t A t by A f. So, as I told that uh, this is basically A f is the conical surface area of the flame which can be obtained by the photographs. Uh, of course, well, nowadays people are using image processing to find out this conical surface area of flame. Earlier days people were measuring by taking a steel photograph and um, <coughs> this is one of the method which will be very crude one, but it will give you some values. Uh, such that it can be utilized. Unlike the previous method this is relatively uh, crude one. As I told earlier that this method is known as the area method. There is another method which is um, known as the nozzle method. Generally the nozzle will be designed in such that there is a increase in velocity and the velocity profile at the exit of this nozzle will be uh, almost like a flat velocity profile or one dimensional velocity profile except in this region there might be little bit change because of development of boundary layer. Keep in mind for nozzle design one has to have a decrease of area the area ratio must be greater than the 4. Uh, is a thumb rule which is being uh, used for designing a nozzle to have a velocity one dimensional velocity profile. And uh, keep in mind that in this case the velocity v u is same everywhere. So, that if you can look at this is basically your v u and then from this photograph what you can do basically uh, you can measure this angle alpha. If I know this angle alpha it is very easy to find out S L and uh, if I resolve this V u into two component one is along the flame surface V u t that means, the unburnt velocity tangen uh, tangential velocity or tangential unburnt velocity. Uh, on the perpendicular to this flame surface that is uh, normal component of unburned velocity. 
and keep in mind that flame is traveling in this direction with S L. So, therefore, S L is equal to V U N and what is that V U N? V U N is nothing but your V U sin alpha because this is your angle alpha is the angle of flame cone this basically half angle. So, then I can get directly the uh, burning velocity by measuring the angle of the flame cone and uh, of course, the V u is already you know because you know the mass flow rate and you can get very easily uh, by knowing the density and also the cross sectional area of the nozzle. So, this uh, method is basically known as nozzle method which is superior as compared to area method, but problem with this method is that it can be used for a very limited range of the uh, fuel air mixtures because the, it is difficult to stabilize the flame in this nozzle as compared to the Bunsen burner uh, in which generally the area method is being used in the laboratory unless you are having a very sophisticated instrument uh, to use like PIV and, uh, and also particle image velocity where you can measure the local velocity not the average velocity. So, the uh, also there it is very uh, important to be careful otherwise you will be land in getting some number which is not really congruent with the reported measurements of the burning velocity for particular fuel and air. So, disadvantages of this method that heat loss to the wall cannot be avoided completely therefore, there might be small error in that and other is the burning velocity does not remain constant along its surface and the flame stabilization for large diameter is difficult due to the flash back because it will be flame will be entering into the burner particularly when the fuel air mixtures is a uh, either the lean or maybe toward the uh, when fuel air mixture is basically lean the flame will be trying to flash back due to the low burning velocity. And let us look at example like where we can calculate um, the burning velocities. The example is very simple one that is in a Bunsen burner of 10 mm diameter a conical laminar flame with a flame height of 5.1 centimeter is established consuming 19 LPM of methane air mixture and uh, determine the laminar burning velocity SL and also average velocity of methane air mixtures. So, it is already given that is a conical flame here. So, and the height of the flame is given and it is having the uh, mass flow rate or the uh, volumetric flow rate is given for the methane air mixtures. It is given H f the flame height is 5.1 centimeter and diameter of the tube is 10 mm and uh, the mixture is something 19 LPM, LPM means liter per minute and we will have to find out V m the velocity of the methane air mixture average velocity of methane mixture and S L burning velocity. So, if you look at what is given is a conical flame. So, uh, it is H f is given. and this radius or the diameter is given this is 10 mm. So, we can find out uh, very easily that is S L is equal to Q m by A f and uh, we can also find out V m is equal to Q m divided by A t. So, if you look at A t, A t is very easy that is pi by 4 d square if you do that uh, multiplied by that into 1 uh, because 10 mm I can say this is basically uh, 1 centimeter then it is nothing but your 0 0.784. 
centimeter and a f I can take it as a right angle uh, cone and then I can find out that a f will be pi r r is basically d by 2 root over r square plus h f square and this is nothing but your r. So, if you do that you will get pi into 0 0.05, 0 0.05 plus 5.1 square. So, you will get 8.02 centimeter square. So, uh, similarly we will get basically V m is nothing but your um, 19 uh, L p m. Uh, divided by 60 into the area is 0 0.784 into 1000 is will be 403.91 centimeter per second and S L is similarly 19 into 1000 divided by 60 into 8.02 you will get 39.48 centimeter per second. So, this is a method by which you can really calculate the burning velocity. Okay, thank you very much. We will stop over here and in the next lecture we will be discussing about uh, few more method how to uh, measure the burning velocity.